The history of black firefighters has been a constant uphill battle for those who simply wanted to help others. In 1910, in Windsor, Ontario, there was a black man, his name was uh, William Montgomery, and he kind of worked in the coal yard. Um, now, he wanted to become a firefighter, so he went down and he wanted to kind of uplift himself. He went down and applied. Uh, he was hired on as a firefighter until 14 of the 16 um, you know, white firefighters decided to sign a petition that uh, if he was hired, they were going to quit. Montgomery's dream was dashed. In the 1960s, in Upper Hammonds, Nova Scotia, there was an all-black fire company. The reason this all-black fire company was formed was because there was tension between the um, Canadian uh, African Nova Scotians and some of the other surrounding white communities. Uh, so it was, it was you know, a, a black community and they couldn't get any of the departments to uh, respond appropriately to their emergencies. So out of necessity, they were forced to have their own. Eugene Steele was the first black firefighter hired in Windsor, Ontario in 1958. He endured horrible treatment, including other firefighters refusing to eat with him or sleep on a mattress he'd used. They even went so far as to put dead rats in his bunk. Windsor's second black firefighter, Ron Jones, was discouraged before his career even started. Ron was asked what he was going to do when he graduated. He said, become a city firefighter. A guidance counselor basically told him to forget about it because he was a black kid and a nobody. He'd never be hired as a city firefighter, so he could set his sights a little lower, perhaps, on becoming a garbage collector for the city of Windsor. Well, being told he couldn't do something was all the motivation he needed. Ron Jones became the second black firefighter in the city of Windsor. He served for 35 years, retired as a district chief. After retiring from the fire department, Jones was a city councillor for 12 years. He's also Captain Porter's uncle and biggest inspiration. There was always pushback, and I know, you know, talking with my uncle, he was called some names, uh, like a lot of names. Um, you know, he had to kind of gain the trust, I guess, of, uh, you know, a lot of the different uh, firefighters. There were some that refused to work with him. Others asked what he was even doing there. Through the years, his work ethic shone through, and for many years, he taught the high-rise course at the college. There are a lot of firefighters in Ontario who actually know who he is, and, and were taught by him. Oakville hired their first black firefighter in 1984, more than 20 years after Windsor. What took so long? Looking at history in the mid-1800s, 400 black people settled in the town of Oakville. They contributed a lot. Um, why it took so long for the first black firefighter in Oakville to kind of happen is beyond me because it seemed like, you know, that was 20% of the population was black back then and you know they didn't have any black firefighters until Michael Harrison came up. Worth noting are contributions to firefighting by black inventors. Thomas Marshall patented the fire extinguisher in 1872 and Joseph Winters created the first fire escape ladder in 1978. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.